Welcome to Red V TV this week pre witness. Um, I'd like to say that we're all paying attention to the rugby at the moment, but we're not. We're all watching the World Cup, aren't we? Well, I am, yeah. yeah. Don't know where we're up to with the rugby at the minute. We're winning. Yeah. We haven't lost for a while. Don't for a long time. Don't upset the rugby fans, though, who uh, think that there's no clash if uh, if England had played on yeah. Friday night. I can, I can yeah. honestly say, if England were playing Brazil in a quarter final on Friday night, I'm not entirely sure the whole of the 17 man squad would turn up to play. <laughs> <laughs> we get the Aussies involved, and that's yeah. it, I think. Yeah. Uh, so luckily for us, England did everybody a favour. No Saints were playing on Friday, didn't beat Belgium. We went and beat Colombia and we can all enjoy the Saints on Friday night. And obviously, hopefully in England win on Saturday. On Saturday. Um, but yeah, witness at home this week. Um, they have picked up a little bit in recent weeks uh, under Francis Cummins since he took over. Um, but is it as close as a gimme as you're going to get in Super League? Um, I don't like I don't like saying yet because it always comes back to, to bite you and I think witness are improving under Francis Cummings I think the, the new coach kind of bounce has happened somewhat although to be fair they've not won a game yet under him um, so root, firmly rooted to the bottom of the yeah. Super League with six points and but f from everything you hear <coughs> though he's, he's improving the style of play and they did run Hull close last week whether that's anything see, to do with their England contingent not the thing not is for witness at the league. moment at this point in the season for them, winning doesn't really matter. No. Nope. Because they're not going to make the top eight. So it's about building and making yourself competitive then for the middle eights when obviously they're going to face tough opposition with Toronto and the likes um, and Leeds. But, uh, don't get me wrong, it'd be a little bit of confidence if they could put a couple of wins together. But they can almost have a free hit at this now. They can treat it as almost like a, a pre-season and just concentrate on the middle eights, on getting the number of wins that they need not to be dragged into million pound game or even worse. At this moment in time, do you see them staying up? Um, Considering how competitive Toronto is and chances are they're probably going to be a Super League side that goes. But are there, I suppose it's one of those that are there enough teams to for them to go? Would they fin Could they finish fourth and win a game at home? Yeah. So them going down isn't necessarily a foregone conclusion. Um, In, at, interesting at, to note that they're, they're building for next season already. They've announced the signing of uh, the man of the people. Basically, be a bit of a... This is not the case we'll be playing. Uh, homesickness cleared up uh, quickly, yeah. didn't it? He's going to love witness then, isn't he? Mm. What's witness like, Kev? Lovely. Um, so yeah, he'll be back in Super League next season. Uh, not entirely sure playing for who. I, I think witness. I do think they'll. they'll I think they'll, they'll go they'll, down. Sorry, I, I'm convinced. I, I, I think. I think they'll. they'll well, mind you, yeah. I suppose if it's Leeds in the bottom four, Huddersfield or Catalan, they're all Huddersfield and Catalan are a bit of a bounce. Yeah, good point. Hull KR. Hull KR is a difficult place to go. Witness is only difficult because of the the difference in the pitch. There's no real. And if witness will only have they'll only have the three home games as well yeah. if they finish in bottom two. I suppose so. Yeah. Well, that's a, yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point that. The, the potential of Toronto London away maybe London away whether they've got to go to Featherstone away you wouldn't yeah. necessarily you, fancy you going fear there. for them um, but yeah there's, a, there's even uh, well uh, whether they play at home or away to Toulouse Toulouse are going to be no walkovers because they're going to want to get into Super League as well mm. um, they will I think they will struggle but it's whether they can put the performances under Francis Cummings into wins because they haven't done so far have they Right, so you've been watching Vikings TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's move on to the, the important stuff. Uh, the squad this week. Yep. Three changes. Uh, Costello, Swift, and the other name escapes me. Amor. Amor. Back in. Um, you say Amor, I say Amor. <laughs> um, back in for Morgan, who must have failed his head test this week. Um, Matty Smith, who's been... Who played last weekend? Well, that before. would have been a good opportunity Sheffield. to play Smith, to be honest. Uh, give Roby a break, but yeah. obviously not. You obviously you said after after the game last week that Justin Albrook doesn't rest players, and looks like that's the case again. So yeah. Ashworth as well, and Ashworth as well. So if we're assuming Swift's going to play, yeah, you as long as make some passes his fitness test. Yep, yeah. he'll play at centre. Yep, yeah. who plays fullback? Um, it depends what they do with Ben, oh, ben Barber because Costello it, could play fullback, yeah, or Costello could play centre. And he didn't, he didn't uh, do anything wrong when he played centre earlier in the season. Um, but it, I think it all depends on on 
obviously the injuries to Makinson and Barber, are they serious enough just to keep them out? Do you week? look at maybe playing Makinson at fullback or Swift at fullback and putting Louis or Dom Peru in the centre? No. Okay. Personally, no. Not at all. But it's, a, but it's an option. It, it's an option. I mean, Louis stepped in there for a little bit on the Yeah, but I, I wouldn't play Louis a full game at centre. I wouldn't play Dom a full game at centre. If you throw Costello into the mix, Costello can cover a number of different uh, positions across that back line. Uh, even if he, if we put him in at full back and uh, God forbid it all went wrong, we can always bring Farjon and drop Lomax back to, to full back and not have that oh, much right, yeah. disruption. So, in my opinion, no, I wouldn't. So I, many I, options in the squad, yeah, though, isn't there? There are, and I wouldn't necessarily go. The, it's almost like a bit too square of a peg for for that round hole they're putting uh, putting Louis or Dom in. We briefly mentioned Matty Smith playing up at Sheffield last week. Good to keep him ticking over ahead of the playoffs. Potentially, if somebody goes down injured, then he'll obviously have a little bit of match fitness to, to slot back in. Obviously, consummate professional. Yeah, I think that's the measure of the man. Uh, the fact that he's he's gone out and actually getting game time over at Sheffield. It makes a lot of sense for him. It makes a lot of sense for us because we're getting to the business end of the season now. Um, and being able to to have that match sharpness is, is a great idea from, from both. But I just like the way that Matty Smith's gone about it. No, and People might not like his style, how he plays. People might love his style and how he plays. But at the end of the day, he's kept his head down. There's harmony in that squad and he's just proven it right there. Yeah. Great cut that wasn't it? Nobody will ever notice. Nobody will notice. Um <laughs> Or will they? Um So yeah, is, is it gonna be a big crowd Friday? Probably not. But uh, you'll you'll still get the old nice summer nice summer with weather though. You will still you'll still get about what you what you used to. It's I can't, just get, a shame. I can't get too enthusiastic at the moment. It's just I think there's just so much else going on. Yeah, you know it's, what? It, it, it's it's such a shame because the likes of witness and, uh, and Salford. It's a shame that they're not getting kind of the the cash that they need and the fans that they need through the gates. Um, yeah, it's the opposition that's making me think of oh, Friday. Yeah. But do you know what? We played Wakefield Friday, and we said afterwards that was an entertaining game. And do you know what? I don't think we give us quite enough credit for the great no. tries we scored. Absolutely. We scored a length of the field, the second half to get back in the game for Regan Grace. That crossfield move, it went through. I think it was like 43 seconds from the play yeah. the ball to the actual try of us keeping it alive and we didn't mention that on Friday I'm, yeah. I'm sorry we got caught we got caught up in just because we had plenty of people on we were discussing it but we played some good rugby at times we played a lot of dumb stuff yeah. and we let with Wakefield back in the game but we scored some great tries yeah absolutely um, and I suppose it, it's one of them that you put down as almost bits of it made it forgettable a lot of the game you, you turn around and you go oh yeah I didn't really remember that I didn't really remember that because it's a game that we're getting kind of back used to just putting to bed and it should have been all over by half time and then we could have started throwing it about a little bit more and been much more comfortable as it was we weren't we just need to kind of get that back in where we're not just scraping through games we're winning back a little bit more comfortably my issue is i don't think we've played well f as in an 80 minutes performance for God, for, a for long, long a while, time yeah now. Yeah. It's been a long time since we've done it, and that's the only slight concern when it starts ramping up in the next few weeks. Where obviously Warrington but, coming up but, and Wigan, but then you've got the gears to move up through. You hope. Yeah, no, I think we have. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's oh, a okay. hope. the it's, gears are there. Yeah. It's it's making it's sure they're well well oiled. And you yeah, can get it's through. engaging them and, yeah. and, and moving through, and that's it. And we've got some some massive games coming up, uh, hopefully the, through the, August. The Catalan semi final. I, I tell you what, it's very very quickly becoming not far off being the hardest tag. The way they're playing. I've, I've been saying this all along. It's not a gimme. It's not a gimme. Did I say at the end of Red V TV on Friday? It is not a gimme. It never has been. They've got a big French pack. And if their pack can keep going forward and going forward and almost win that battle of the forwards, it'll be then, tough after well, that. Then they put them. They put the platform on. So if, if Greg Bird's playing at 13 or at 6, He's going to be influential. Josh Drinkwater currently is one of the signings of the season because he is playing brilliantly. It's a wonder nobody else picked him up. And he was allowed to drift for yeah, so long well, over in Australia. Was, wasn't he at Lee? Yeah, and he, he, went, yeah, he went, yeah. Back home. But you, back home. But you just think that, they, and they've got the likes of David Mead who's quick. They've got the likes of Tony Gigo who's one of them characters that you kind of love to hate. And I was watching um, the game against Catalan game against Witness where he did a dropout and he dropped it so it went ten. 
ran onto it himself, Gone. made 40 yeah. metres and then got the penalty off the back of it. And it's little things like that that you've got to look out for, yeah. Um, the only other big news of the week, Leeds sacking Brian McDermott. Uh, I think I put on the tweets that I've got a lot of time for Brian McDermott. I think he's a, 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 he always comes across as a decent bloke. Um, I watched that Leeds film. Um, that was on Amazon Prime that they produced that type of winning season and now don't hate me. I watched it and it was interesting to note there seemed to be a bit of needle with the players. I don't know whether they always seemed eye to eye. This season, obviously it's a poor season for them, but they've lost five games by a point and they drew with Huddersfield. So that's potentially what, 11 points that they've dropped which would have had them in the top four. Considering what he's won over the last eight years, do they find themselves a little bit unlucky? Or does he find himself a little bit unlucky? Possibly. I thought he might have got until the end of the season. Especially with a, a semi coming up. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I think um, I'd have thought he'd got till the end of the season. It's kind of tempered with the fact that he has won so much and he's almost got that much in the bank, hasn't he? Uh, because when we wanted to get rid of our previous coach, he didn't have anything to work with. He had his legendary status at Saints, but unfortunately you measured on how many trophies you win as a coach, exactly. not how many and you won back in the I'd day. hate to think if we had a coach who'd won four titles, a couple of World Cup championships, a couple of Challenge Cups, that we'd hound him out. It, yes, they, they, but they won it last season. But, but is it that he's probably stayed that little bit too long? Has he stayed that little Has bit he, too long? You've had injuries can, this season. Yeah, but can, can you also get stale? Because I'd question the, the likes of Joel Moon playing at six. I don't see Joel Moon as a six. He's a centre who can fill in at six. But is that because of injuries that he's playing there a lot? No, because he's got the number six shirt. Hmm. So where, where's your recruitment? It's not like he's wearing number three and filling in there. And that's just what you've got to do. But then does recruitment at Leeds fall on Brian McDermott? Because I'm pretty it, sure it doesn't fall on the coach. No, the it, it probably doesn't. But you'd imagine that... That he'll he'll turn around and say, "This is what we need," and almost like a little bit of input in. I would like a standoff, please. And it might not necessarily be the standoff that he wants, but he will then get a standoff from his board. See, I look at Leeds and think that they've, because they've had all the success, they get the big crowds, they've got the stadium development going on. They've, they've kind of took their eye off the boil a little bit when it comes to recruitment, because at the end of the day. I don't know why it came as a shock that like Kevin Sinfield and Maguire and everybody else were going to get old and retire. Could the same have been said for us when we Exactly, and we did stadium, exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Uh, we just didn't win trophies along the way like Leeds yeah, have. Well. Um, You've been watching Linus TV. Yeah. Vikings, Red V and Linus <laughs> TV. Um, not much else to say, apart from we will probably see you on Friday night yeah. after the game. Um, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, and we'll see you Friday.